Okay, so hey man, uh, they got that missile system over to Israel in about five seconds, right? Wow, that's that's not easy. That's not like that's not like you call FedEx and they they bring right. a missile system over. That takes a lot to send a missile system that's going to be really effective against incoming attacks to Israel. Billions of dollars. We just sent more money to Ukraine. But now, you know, Congress is out of session right now. So the disaster loan program is exhausted. And gosh darn it, there's nothing they can do about it. Well, what are you going to do? They're on vacation. The nation's loan program for disaster survivors has fully exhausted its funding, the Biden administration announced Tuesday. And lawmakers, the only ones who can greenlight more funding, are slated to be out until after Election Day. Without congressional action, the Small Business Administration can make new, can't make new loan offers to people trying to rebuild businesses and homes hit by disasters like Hurricanes Helene and Milton. Speaker Mike Johnson has repeatedly said he does not intend to call lawmakers back to town before the scheduled November 12th return, however, saying over the weekend that it would be premature to gavel back in to approve emergency disaster aid before states have calculated their recovery needs from the two hurricanes. Wow, yeah, we wouldn't man. want to just send them too much. God forbid. We wouldn't. We wouldn't want. Hey, they. These people need. They work hard. Right. They're on vacation. What do you expect them to all fly back and approve emergency disaster aids? These. This Congress made up of millionaires and billionaires. You expect them to be inconvenienced for the peasants? Well, the excuse is that you. it's campaign season and that they're campaigning. But, of course, Congress has, what, a 90-plus percent reelection rate? So, like, fewer than 10 percent of these races are competitive at all. It's not like they well, have and to that, be Well, and that's no excuse yeah. in and of itself. No, even but I'm saying even if, even if that were an excuse, it's really not because, oh, what, all you would have to do – is call back what 40 or 50 people you wouldn't even need them even if like if you had enough bipartisan support to get hurricane relief which you would think you would then just call back the whatever 250 of them who don't have to campaign and let them vote everybody else can just miss the vote and they'd still have the majority and vote the aid through like there's no reason why they can't get half of them back to vote yes yeah well or if uh if russia suddenly advanced a few hundred miles i bet they'd be back right. yeah they'd be Congress back yeah to approve exactly more aid Yep. After learning that the loan program was depleted, Johnson said in a statement Tuesday that there's no question these devastating back-to-back -back storms have stressed the SBA funding program. Well, that's good of him to acknowledge that. He acknowledges it. He's not going to do anything about it, but he acknowledges it. But the Biden-Harris administration has the necessary disaster funding right now to address the immediate needs of American people in these hurricane-affected areas, the speaker continued. Congress is tracking this situation closely, and when members return in just a few short weeks, not to be confused with the long type of weeks, right. these are right. going to be yes. the short type. The short weeks. weeks. The good news, the short folks, weeks. is that these are short weeks. These are short weeks. These are not, they, they have seven days, right. but uh, according to Einstein's theory of relativity, these weeks that occur in October are shorter perceptually than right. the long weeks, the dreaded long weeks. Right. The administration should have an accurate assessment of the actual dollar amount needed, and there will be strong bipartisan support to provide the necessary funding. Some Republican lawmakers have publicly indicated they would be more open to returning if agencies said they were out of money. Without calling lawmakers back to the Capitol, congressional leaders could use their brief pro forma sessions to pass an emergency funding bill for the loan program. But any lawmaker could block a request for passage without a roll call vote. Representative Jared Moskowitz has already introduced a bill that would provide SBA, he's a Democrat from Florida, would provide SBA with $8 billion for disaster loans stressing that Congress should have proactively funded that agency in FEMA before going on a months-long recess during hurricane season. When you're right, you're right. 
President Joe Biden said in a statement Tuesday that Johnson has promised that this and other disaster programs will be replenished when Congress returns. He urged Americans to continue to apply for the loans. Without a refill, the agency must halt all new loan offers, but can still do some prep work like initial processing of loan applications. FEMA, on the other hand, is still expected to have enough funding to last until after Election Day, even though the agency has blown through nearly half of the $20 billion Congress approved for the Disaster Relief Fund in late September. FEMA Administrator uh, Deanne Criswell warned last week that she might have to pivot to covering only immediate needs with money in the Disaster Relief Fund earlier than anticipated. Criswell has predicted that she would need to switch to that cash conservation mode in December or January, pausing all long-term disaster recovery efforts like rebuilding on Maui after last year's wildfires. But last week, the administrator warned that she's going to have to assess that every day to see if I can wait that long. The more than $20 billion Congress cleared before they left in September does not fulfill any of the emergency disaster aid requests the White House has sent over the last year. In June, the White House requested $4 billion in extra disaster funding to respond to tornadoes, wildfires, and hurricanes, as well as the rebuilding of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. That unfulfilled request builds on the White House's year-old plea for Congress to provide $23.5 billion in extra disaster aid. Now, in this age of seemingly bottomless wells of foreign aid for military adventures in Ukraine and Israel, this is just maddening. And, and, and there's a pattern. When it comes to what the American people need, even in the face of a disaster, Something that there's no ideological split on, like school funding and and educational curriculum. There's no debate about disaster funding. Even on that level, it's go get your fucking shine box. Even on that level, anything that the American people need, it's always a problem. It's always an issue. And for anyone who thinks because they talk the language of populism that the Republicans well, the Republicans care about the average people. Look at this. And 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 that's we're not Democrats here. But look at this. Who who controls the house? Who controls the house? The Republicans. Well, of the speaker is saying, "Hey, these are the short weeks. These aren't the long weeks, so don't right. break our balls. We're campaigning right now, which as Keaton points out, most of us are not in danger of losing our seats." The idea that they would come back from recess, he's presenting that like that's just crazy talk to expect Congress to come back. And as the congressman who put forth that $8 billion bill pointed out, why didn't they do this before they left? Why didn't they do this before they went on recess? Like, why would you Why would you leave it in that state? They wouldn't do that to Ukraine. They of wouldn't course. do that to Israel. They would never go on recess without making sure the, the war zones have all the funding they need. The American people, go fuck yourself. Well, yeah, you know, it's funny. I um, I got a, a personal extension for my taxes this year, so I just had to file my taxes because the extension deadline is October 15th. So I think an interesting policy change that's really worthwhile, um, as long as we're figuring out what our list of demands is going to be moving forward, you know, in 2025 and beyond, how about moving tax day to the middle of hurricane season. I like that idea very much because imagine if tax day fell during hurricane season. Imagine imagine if millions and millions, hundreds of millions of Americans had to file their taxes now when the government that you're funding with your taxes is saying, ah, we wish we could get the aid out the door, but you're going to have to give us a few weeks because we're on recess. I think tax day should fall in the middle of hurricane season. That would wake a lot of people up, and it may even light a fire under their ass. Because I guarantee you, I'm serious, like if people had to pay taxes at this moment, <laughs> you would see a lot more unrest. Well, that, yes. The, this is, you know, people talk, and we're going to be showing a little bit of our interview with Jill Stein 
We talked a little bit about the world after the election in terms of building Muslim solidarity. That'll be on the full interview. Um, but yes, in terms of our project, I think really what we need to do is develop a list that people can coalesce around of what we are demanding. And one of the tactics might be tax strikes. Tax day during hurricane season. That's a start. Tax day yeah. should fall during hurricane season. I, let I people have, no, have to have pay no... the government. Let, let the government coerce people into funding them when they do this, at the moment they do this. I've known activists who purposely kept their income, their reported income anyway, below the level where you'd have to pay federal taxes. Made right. sure never to have more reported income than that so that they wouldn't be funding these wars. Right. It's an interesting idea, too. Interesting idea, too. Well, now, I mean, look, Trump might help you with that, with the no tax on tips. We can all just go out and shake a cup in the air, right? There you go. There you go. Everyone can become a tour guide, a waiter, bartender. Everybody could become a panhandler. That might be a yeah. good That may be a good sure. economic model. Just Pan everyone go out and beg for money from the people who, who have it. If there you go. live in New York City, you know, they say there's too many homeless people. I say there's too few people begging on the streets. I think people who have apartments should be begging on the streets. I think everybody should be. Everybody should just flood the financial district and ask these rich fucks for money. Panhandle just line justice. the streets. Yeah, just line the streets. That's perfectly legal. You don't, you don't, you don't hit them. You don't threaten them or anything. But why aren't there like thousands of people lining the streets of Wall Street every day? So as these people head into work, they're just they have to walk through thousands of people just asking them for cash. Why not? There's only one problem with in this Trump's scheme. America. They won't even have to be they, they that that will be untaxable income. No tax on tips. That's a tip. Well, you're making a case for voting Trump. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the problem with that scheme, as I could tell you as uh you have a when did you leave the city 2017 yeah so you haven't lived here in seven years yeah um, i left there, right when it was on a way down like the real heyday of like bloomberg era new york was when i was there 2012 to 2014 right, 15 right, right. and then it started you got it you got a sense of the decline right as i left and then once yeah. i left obviously the bottom fell out i was holding that it, city up on, yeah, on my it, shoulder it, it was you the wall the wall street people um, they do not go to the stock exchange anymore. Yeah, I know. it was, okay. it, was I, you know. it, it was, it was on, it was on that trajectory. And then COVID, that was it. They all went to Florida. When you came back after COVID, I was, I was working for a company for a while uh, when we first started to be able to work again that did Wall Street tours right at nine. The market opens at nine thirty. So if the right. brokers are there, you're gonna see them. Nothing. You got you got that few people who wound up buying those condos there after 9/11, walking their dogs, a little smattering of that, and tourists, and that's it. There's like no stockbrokers there anymore. Please clap.